is uh, an organism which is on the base of the food chain, basically. It uh, spawn and the spawn become part of the zooplankton, which is food for many kind of uh, marine life. So, planktivore like damsel fish, smaller fishes feed on this plankton, and therefore bigger fishes feed on the smaller fishes, and it goes on and on. Eventually, it makes food for human. With the degradation of coral reef, that means the population of fish is also decreasing due to lack of sustenance, basically. And if we don't focus on this, and we don't bring the reef back, we are eventually running into a dead end. My name is Anwar Abdullah. I am the founder of Ocean Quest Global. We work together with the Thai National Park in Maya Bay, and we also work in the whole region in Southeast Asia. What we do is we do coral reef rehabilitation. Coral reef rehabilitation, there's many stages. The first three stages include coral rescue, coral propagation, and nursery development. Coral propagation means we cut the coral into micro colonies or micro fragments, we call it, small, and then we bond it onto living rocks from the ocean without any man made materials to propagate them. And then once we propagate them, we need to place it in somewhere we can manage them and therefore it comes in a coral nursery. What we are doing here is nursery development. Nursery development is based more or less like an agricultural system. In all agricultural systems, they, they have planting strategy, meaning that rice or corn or all kind of agricultural produce will be planted according to the time of the season. So is coral. Coral, we have to study the cycle of the season to be able to propagate and to rehabilitate reef effectively. One of it is nursery development. Here in this diagram, first we discuss about the position. This is Maya Bay and this is the position of all the nurseries basically. So the position of all the nursery is parallel to the incoming waves. It, is, it will never be put perpendicular to it because the, the energy wave of the waves will just destroy it. By having it parallel to the incoming energy, it allows a dissipation of energy through um, the shape and position of this nursery. Second, the nursery is built so that management is possible it is two meters wide by five meters long, meaning that the two meters, the reason that it's two meters is because when the nursery is growing, we don't allow anyone to swim over it. Instead, we will work in a uh, peripheral of it, you know, around it. So we will work on the side of it. Having two meters, we are able to reach the center of the nurseries. And then five meters is because two by, by five makes 10 meters square. Therefore, it's much easier for management and calculations. And then each of this nursery has a tag, a tag number for management purpose. The shape of the nursery is more or less triangular or pyramid shape. The reason is that by having this, it's like the shape of the bow of a boat. The bow boat is shaped in this way so that it pushes through water with less resistance and therefore it requires less energy to drive the boat. Whereas on here, the nursery is not moving but the energy of the wave is moving and when it comes over the top of the nursery, it dissipates by cutting through and therefore it, it will incur less damage to the nursery during the monsoon season. This is why we are doing it now in March because in August is the low season when there's big wave, we have to prepare it from now. Yeah, so by preparing from now, we allow all the rocks to settle and become a solid foundation.
is Manuel San Martin, originally from Argentina, been living in Copipi for seven years. Currently, I own a dive shop called Pura Vida. And since three, four, maybe four years ago, I've been working with Anwar Abdullah from Ocean Quest. Uh, during these years, we basically did a lot of projects in the area, not only in Copipi. Right now, we're focused here in Maya Bay, which is probably our main project at the moment. And yeah, of course, it's about coral restoration, right? Okay, what we're doing here is basically trying to contribute in the coral reef rehabilitation. The method uh, that we use, it's very, it's kind of unique because it's, it's natural. We don't introduce any man-made materials or any yeah, artificial materials into the ocean. We just use natural materials. It's very cost effective because as we use natural materials, same thing. We don't have to spend much money and it's open for everybody. It's not only for the scientific community like other coral restoration methods. So anybody can do it. You just need to be a diver, take a course, take some training through Ocean Quest and do it. What we're doing here is basically taking coral brewstock from other places in the area, like dive sites where coral, because of bad diving practices or snorkeling or anchoring, the coral gets damaged. So we rescue the coral, bring it over here, fragment it in small pieces around one or two centimeters, which makes them grow faster. And then we are trying to plant them back into the reef of Maya Bay, which has been degraded in the last two decades, maybe big time because of uh, not only because of the filming of the movie, which caused some damage, but also the boom of Maya Bay after the movie caused many boats to come here every day, around 200, 300 boats parking on the beach. So everything that is, all this shallow area has been completely devastated. There's nothing left alive there. There's no life cycle. There's no possibilities to coral to grow on the bottom because everything is gone. So what we do is we're going to divide everybody into a team of two. So we plan to do two of these squares per team today. You start with the first square, which is in the morning, and then continue to the second square after lunch. So we one during the morning and one during the afternoon. So two of each. Later on, I want you to write a name here, who's with you, two. You go to the tag number, you see your tag number, and then you work on it. So I will be in the water as well, I will be helping. Wear gloves, the rocks, they are sharp, right? Make sure before you lift a rock, make sure it's a rock, not a stone fish. Mm -hmm. Okay? So look before you grab the rock. If it's cloudy, the water is cloudy, let, let it settle before you put your hands in. Because it might be stone fish, scorpion fish, can be anything, right? Ghost pipe fish, yeah, we have a resident ghost pipe fish just in three meters of water. You can, uh, you can uh, see it because the nursery path is going to pass through its territory. That's always there. It's brown in color, about that long. We are going to leave an empty space at the um, sandy area here for the boat to come in and out. The rest on the left and on the right hand side where the rubble is, there's going to be all the nurseries. The numbers here is just example. The real number will be when the, when the project is complete is 450 nurseries. Yeah. So we are just starting the first 10. When you pick up rocks and you look under the rocks, sometimes they are pink, purple stuff on it. Those are called coralline algae. The coral and algae is very important. Biologically, it's holding all the rocks together. Don't turn it to face the sun. They don't like the sun. They should be under, under the rock. Place it facing down, and then it will grow onto the other rocks and hold the rocks together to make it strong.
Part of the documentation that we do includes videography and photography that we need to monitor the growth and the progress of uh, the coral nursery and the coral growth. And one of it is using underwater camera like this one I'm holding. This one is a video cam. It, it records all the activities going on at the nursery as well as it records what kind of marine life was attracted to the nursery when the coral is growing. So one of the monitoring process is to record what kind of habitat and what, kind, what attracts, what was attracted to this new habitat created in the nursery. Once this is done, then there will be other levels like management of reefs. Conservation of coral reef, there's three things. One is protection, the other one is restoration, the third one is management. We are in the restoration part because we have to skip the protection part because there's not much left to protect. So we concentrate on what is needed right now is a lot of rehabilitation. But once we have an area that is pristine, then we protect it and then we manage it. Then only we can allow time for the coral to regenerate and repopulate all the reefs again. If we don't do this on the base of the food chain, nothing above this base food chain is going to survive without this food and shelter that is provided by the coral reef. I do this it's been a while I mean since very young age I wanted to contribute in some way in conservation it was difficult for me because I never had the resource or the place or the money to volunteer or to do it uh, then when I decided to stay in living PP I decided to do something about it I met Anwar in Singapore in a dive exposition and so we decided to start working together since then we started doing not only projects for coral restoration but also training for this method that he designed right through Ocean Quest. Uh, something very important for me about this project is that it's not being done by an international organization but everything is being taken care of by the conservation department of the national park uh, which is very important because they are the ones that own the resource they are the Actually, the local communities, their next generations who's going to enjoy or not this place or who's going to be able to make use of the resource, right? Not only the tourism resource, but any other resource that this, all the reefs in the area can produce, like fishing as well, right? So that's what makes me be so proud and so engaged with this project, which is that the Thai people is doing it.
First of all, I would like to thank you for a big job today. I think that's the most strenuous diving you ever done in very, very shallow water. This is the coral that is going to be taken and put in damaged reefs around this area. So when they grow, the coral will remain there, but we will take the branches and we plant in damaged reefs. So this is where they continue to grow, become the parent colony, we call it the colony that produce, continue to reproduce, and this coral will go to all the different dive sites and for replenishment. In yeah. this bay, what you've done is uh, completed today is 50 nurseries, and there's about 4,000 corals in there. And Since then. June, we've been planting a lot of corals. The total that we have is yeah, 18,000 is in this bay here. So that means you have moved just now about 4,000 of them. So thank you again for helping us. I hope you come back again next time because it's very tiring, I can see. <laughs> you know, we feed you, but we make you work, huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, from us, from a National Park, we want to say thank you very much for everyone come to help uh, recover Miami. Yeah. Thank you, thank you very much. Coral reef around the world is uh, destroyed by many reasons. You cannot pinpoint just one because it's a multiple causes that is causing the coral reef to uh, degrade. But in Maya Bay, it is unregulated tourism, which, is, which means that there are too many people coming here and then the anchoring, the boat anchors that has been dropping in this bay for 18 years almost, from between 1999 to 2018. Um, it is exposed to this kind of destruction. Therefore, when the bay is closed in 2018, in June, the bay has nothing but water and rocks left. Uh, there's no living corals, there's no fish, there's nothing in it. And then now we're trying to rehabilitate it because of the damage. I founded Ocean Quest in 2010 with the focus of coral reef rehabilitation mainly coral reef rehabilitation. We have other expertise, but we focus on the base of the food chain first. By doing rehabilitation in this way, 
where it is cost efficient as well as it is uh, educational and it opens room for more research. That means it can spread in a broader scale and a shorter period of time. Yeah. That's the reason why we concentrate on this one.